we're going to use this table from your book to discuss the structures of the ear. We're going to learn those structures that are involved in hearing and those structures that are involved in equilibrium. So the ear controls two special senses, both hearing and equilibrium. Looking at this drawing, we notice that there is three areas or three parts to the ear. There is the outer ear, colored in this video, in this picture, the middle ear, containing the auditory ossicles, and then the inner ear, which contains this very complicated structure. We're going to work our way from the outer ear through the inner ear, middle ear, and then into the inner ear. So first we start with the external or outer ear, which is made up of the auricle, or pinna, the external auditory canal, or meatus, and the tympanic membrane, or eardrum. The auricle collects sound waves and transfers them into the external auditory canal. The external auditory canal directs these sound waves to the tympanic membrane. When the sound waves make contact with the tympanic membrane, it causes it to vibrate. On the inner surface of the tympanic membrane are the auditory ossicles. One auditory ossicle, known as the malleus, is attached to the tympanic membrane. Therefore, when the tympanic membrane vibrates, so does the malleus. So what has happened is sound waves have been converted into vibrations, which are now traveling into the middle ear using the auditory ossicles. So let's look at the middle ear. The middle ear is made up of the auditory ossicles and the eustachian tube, also known as the auditory tube. The auditory ossicles are the smallest three bones in the human body. They're the size of a grain of rice. Their job is to transmit and amplify the vibrations coming from the tympanic membrane and transfer or transmit these vibrations to what's known as the oval window. The oval window in this drawing is right here. It's a hole in this complicated structure known as the cochlea. So the tympanic membrane vibrates, the malleus vibrates, the next ossicle is known as the incus, and then finally the stapes. When the stapes vibrates, it's going to produce waves of fluid that travel within the cochlea. The auditory tube is there to equalize pressure on each side of the tympanic membrane. If pressure is different on one side versus the other, that tympanic membrane will not vibrate properly. So for instance, when you change altitudes, pressure changes in the atmosphere. If this tube was closed, the pressure in the inner ear would maintain the same, whereas the outer parts of the ear, the pressure changes. So in order to equalize, this auditory tube has to open up. This portion of the auditory tube is located in the back of your throat, and the back of your throat is op opens up to the atmosphere. Sometimes when you hear your ears pop, that's opening of the eustachian tube. So what, what, are, what, do we, what did we learn so far? We have sound waves coming in, vibrating the tympanic membrane, vibrating the three auditory ossicles, the third sitting inside an oval window of the cochlea. So let's look at that complicated inner ear. This structure is often called the bony labyrinth. 
A labyrinth is a very complicated set of tunnels and tubes and canals. This bony labyrinth can be divided into two structures. The cochlea, which is involved in hearing, and the vestibular apparatus, which is involved in equilibrium. Let's stick with hearing. As the stapes vibrates in the oval window, it produces waves of fluid known as endolymph inside of the cochlea. As those waves move inside the cochlea, it stimulates sensory structures known as the organ of corti. Inside the organ of corti are sensory receptor cells known as hair cells. These hair cells produce action potentials that then travel to the brain within the cochlear duct or cochlear branch of the vestibular cochlear nerve. We'll take a look at a video that will help us understand this process. Looking at the rest of the inner ear, we have a series of ducts known as the semicircular canals, and we have a structure found here which contains a couple sacs called the utricle and saccule. We will look, about, look at these structures in the next video.